The Battlefront series is both beloved and also not. I thought it was the perfect time to go back to the real Battlefront 2. You know, the one everyone likes. The general consensus is that the classic games by Pandemic Studios were better received than the newer ones by EA. Now, I could go into who handled the games better, but after playing through them both recently, I'm sorry. But I think Battlefront can do better. I think for a series that promised in a trailer back in 2004 how it was going to live up to the battles from the movies, Battlefront deserves better. When I went into or back into the series, I wanted to see if classic Battlefront held up 20 years later, or if it was my rose-tinted glasses. But after playing through them both, I didn't have much to say. I can easily go through what stuck out to me, what I liked and didn't in a few minutes. So let's do that. On the positives, I like the campaign structure in OG Battlefront 2. It feels a bit non-linear. The levels are wide and open. It doesn't railroad you down some corridor. I really love the time missions. There's a good variety of missions, even if they're kinda gimmicky. The story is inoffensive. There's not much there, but Tamora Morrison does a great job delivering his lines. What I remember about the rise of the Empire is, is how quiet it was. Plus, adding some context is always nice. As for EA's Battlefront 2, uh, it's pretty. Presentation wise, it's great. There's also some set piece moments that are just fun too. The negatives? The gunplay in the classics is pretty underwhelming. It lacks weight and kick to them. Galactic Assault feels half-baked and underdeveloped. I had the AI attack me five times in a row over the same planet. I didn't like how it locked out basic classes like the anti-tank trooper, which is necessary against vehicles. I found both series a bit too mindless. EA's Battlefront felt like you were playing on autopilot. Enemies just lack any sense of self-preservation. The AI in classic Battlefront though is just way too chaotic. Like, Jesus, what's going on? I also wish the defensive missions in EA's Battlefront didn't feel so stationary. All you do is just point at the bad guys rushing for the objectives. But besides one last problem I have, that's all I can say about the games themselves. And when I looked online to see what people wanted from a potential Battlefront 3, it didn't feel all too inspired. Just more of the same. More planets, more weapons, more heroes, more skins. So what is that last problem? Well, I had to first ask a question. What do you think when you hear of Battlefront? What ideas come to mind? Is it epic battles? on a massive scale, between four different unique armies, basically like the movies, right? But I never felt like the Battlefront games really accomplished that. I don't think the games really made me feel like I took part in some massive campaign, that I was part of some well-oiled machine, or that the armies even played differently. And that's why I want to talk about how I'd build a better Battlefront. I think the Battlefront games should try to live up to the promise and ideas the series evokes. Massive battles between different distinct armies. EA's Battlefront allows 40 players in a game. OG Battlefront allows 64 players. And I still don't think that's enough. I'm not saying that we should add hundreds of players into Battlefront. It might cause some issues. So for the first thing I'd change to make Battlefront more grand scale, why not introduce squads? Yeah, squads. Have each player be entitled to a group of playable soldiers. Soldiers that would otherwise be AI bots following you around. It's an idea that I think was first introduced in Battlefield 1. This idea of swapping between soldiers. 
or at least whenever you died. Unfortunately, it was only used in this one scripted single player level. Right now though, there is a game called Enlisted, and that's fully committing to this idea with its multiplayer, with the added bonus of swapping between trooper to trooper. I haven't put much time into Enlisted, but I think it's actually pretty promising. I really do love how having AI bots mow down makes you feel like you're contributing to the battlefield. Contrast that with many traditional games, where you're going up against some players who may or likely are better than you. Let's look at his points compared to everyone else. He's pretty much doubled the points of every other person. <laughs> I think having squads and AI bots just would make the battles feel larger. Imagine just having 5 AI bots per player, and if it's 20v20, that's 200 entities on a battlefield. Also those squads would have different classes in them. Like, what if you come across something like a tank? In any other game, you'd be pretty screwed if you didn't pick up an anti-tank class. But in Enlisted, or My Pitch, you can swap to a trooper in your squad that can deal with that. I think that could lead to some really memorable moments and create some fond stories about your squad. Speaking about your own squad, without getting into the scummy business practices EA would love to dip into, imagine being able to customize the squad members. Picking and choosing the gear on your troops, giving them patterns or color markings, maybe even naming your squad and individual squad members if you want. So with that said, bigger battles, having a bot to take out so players feel like they're contributing, creating moments where you can swap between a squad mate to deal with a specific problem, and having squads to personalize and customize? Seems like a win-win, no? The second thing I think would benefit that Battlefront games immensely is having unique factions. I love when games have meaningfully different factions. I love it when the sides you're fighting for, or against, have different vibes and playstyles. It adds variety and personality to the experience. Enemy unit down. It's always disappointing when you have two sides or more play basically the same. Sure, Battlefront games released so far have some unique classes, but I don't know. Does that really make the armies feel significantly different? They overall feel like I'm playing the same side, just with different character models and some tiny few differences. Ultimately, they don't profoundly play differently. My issues probably stem from all the strategy games spoiling me as a kid. Games like Command & Conquer and more made each side feel so unique and special in their own way. Americans were into high-tech weaponry, the Chinese into numbers, the GOA into sneaky tactics, or Company of Heroes. You have this whole David vs Goliath dynamic. But the allies compensate for that in quantity and affordability. That's the beauty of strategy games and having faction identities. I love the idea of pitting their differences, their strengths, their weaknesses, against each other. That said, not every strategy game handled factions in a unique way. There was a game called Star Wars Battlegrounds, and that game offered a whopping 8 factions that all played basically the same. So much so that the droid armies build farms? which means they need food, also they need wood. And the Gungans have starships? Yeah, there was very little differences between the eight factions. 
which is a shame because they could have done so much more with the Wookiees, Gungans, Droids, Rebels, and more. And same with Battlefront. You have the Droid Army, the Clones, the Empire, and the Rebels. What do you think of when those come to mind? Droid Army? You think of overwhelming numbers, right? The Clone Army? Highly trained, genetically superior soldiers. Rebels? Hit and run guerrilla warfare, right? The Empire? Target, maximum firepower. Highly reliant on overwhelming firepower. You can do so much with those ideas. Players in the droid army might have way more AI bots and squads. Maybe 8 to 10 droids? There could be a buff to your rate of fire when you and other nearby players are close to one another, which encourages players to pile on in certain key points. This was kinda explored in Rising Storm, how the Japanese team got a stamina and health buff if they charged together in one group. Dodge. Players fighting for the clone army would have smaller squads of 45 soldiers. Individually though, each member would have way more health and more stamina. Quality over quantity. Players fighting for the Empire would have smaller squads and the rebels, but make up for it with more vehicles and support. This would represent how reliant on firepower the Imperial forces are. Against them, the rebels would try to avoid direct, sustained confrontation. The rebel soldiers could also plant traps. I guess I just want to imagine that I'm jumping into distinct armies that have different doctrines and playstyles, living up to how people think of the armies in the films and expanded materials. <laughs> Lastly, the final proposal I want from a better, more thematic battlefront is a sandbox campaign. Look, I love my linear, tight, single-player campaigns with a well-told story. We didn't get that in EA's Battlefront 2, or we didn't get a good one to be more specific. I think the Battlefront series thematically deserves a campaign that is bigger than one or a couple characters. It's kind of weird that EA's Battlefront 2 even focused on a few set of characters, when I thought the main appeal of Battlefront was putting yourself into the shoes of some small participant on the battlefield. But I feel like this one's campaign is just, it's made so much better because you're straight up just a soldier. Every rifleman, engineer, pilot, and more contributing to the overall battle. It needs to show how different cogs work together in the grand scheme of things. So a linear campaign where you play one or a few characters wouldn't cut it. And this is closer to the original idea in the OG Battlefront games. I can't stress enough how much I prefer this non-linear approach than what we got in EA's Battlefront. Even as chaotic as the missions were, I felt like I did a better job of capturing the large-scale conflict. I think that's what Battlefront should embrace. Take the OG Battlefront 2's direction, and not just that, but take elements from the Galactic Assault mode. Why not give players some strategic options? Reward players on accomplishing the missions. Maybe throw in extra rewards if you complete their bonus objectives, or perform very well, like keeping casualties low, or finishing a mission in a certain amount of time. Those rewards could allow you to unlock a squad of elite ARC troopers, assassin droids, purge troopers, rebel commandos, and more. Your squad members can gain experience that you invest into weaponry or gear. You might access more heavy off-map support, slap penalties on enemies before the battle starts, and more. Just imagine the sheer replayability this sandbox, non-linear campaign could offer, being personally invested in the squads they can deploy. Players can change up their strategies, choosing different planets and routes, with no campaign playthrough ever being the same. Easier than the Kessel Run. It's something I absolutely love in strategy games. It's one of the reasons why people love the Total War series. 
People grew attached to the armies they fostered and commanded throughout the playthrough. By the end of the Clone Army campaign, for example, players would have created something like the 501st Legion on their own. Seeing their inexperienced clone units, first deployed on Geonosis, become the mighty and elite 501st by the end, all through your actions, not dictated by some pre-written story like the existing campaign in OG Battlefront 2. In no small part due to the efforts of the fighting men of the 501st. Having said all that, in the end, first-person shooters are kind of lacking the ideas department. The last time I thought they really changed things up was Titanfall, adding bots and titans to the battlefield. Or Enlisted, that's trying to make AI squads a thing. But one genre of gaming that I think has been the most vibrant, most heavy on theming, and big on ideas, has been the strategy genre. I still see strategy titles place a high premium on interesting mechanics, concepts, and faction design. And I think Battlefront should take cues from the strategy genre. Strategy games are fundamentally big on ideas and scale. Yeah, I that kind of top-down approach to game design probably would fit the idea of Battlefront. Big epic battles, unique different armies that play differently, a sandbox campaign with player-driven stories across a war-torn galaxy? That, to me, sounds like what Battlefront should be. And I hope one day, that potential will be realized. I'm Sam Blips, and thanks for watching. I'd like to thank Nati, Narv, JG Plagiarisms, and FarmerDude11 for backing me on Patreon. I really appreciate any kind of help on my channel, whether it's Patreon, liking the video, commenting on it, or subscribing. Thank you.